Um, Al, what are your, some of your thoughts with regards to this matchup on Tuesday? What are, what are you looking to, to speak to uh, our guest about on tomorrow's show? Oh, man. You want me to give a teaser? Is that it, huh? You want to know all yeah, the information well, yeah, I'm doing what, for tomorrow? Yeah, what are you Sheesh. thinking? Like, like what, do you, what, what is, your, say, your top three concerns or thoughts going into this game that, that you're going to chop it up with, uh, with our guest tomorrow? First one, which one's going to which one's going to win? Knicks defense or Bucks offense? That's going to be number one because Nick, the Bucks offense is on the uptick. Knicks defense has been solid. Um, both teams on the opposite end of the court that's starting to get over. They're starting they're starting to even out, right? Bucks defense starting to try to figure their way, starting to come together a little bit. Knicks offense starting to come together a little bit. But what's going to win? Is it going to be the Knicks defense? Is it going to be the Bucks offense? I need answers on that. Next thing I got to figure out. Brunson versus Willard, bro. I need to I need to know that point guard matchup. That's going to be a big thing to me. And Randall versus Giannis. And obviously, I got to talk about the bench. Those are those are those are the big things I got to talk about for tomorrow's matchup. I'm not going to go into full detail. You got to tune in, man. You got to tune in to get all the things that I got locked down. Okay. There's some stats I'm going to bring up as well. That you got to tune in. I'm not going to give up all the secrets. Good, good, good. I I, I hear you on that. Um, man, I got so many concerns with this game. Where do I start? First matchup of the season. First matchup in the season tournament. Knicks lost 110 to 105. A couple of things. Uh, a couple of things. Both teams are better than they were than that matchup. I think we could both agree on that. Um, what makes the Bucks so dangerous for me is that while we watch their games and they have those inconsistent periods of you know, offense where they're just not on. They're just not clear. They don't have the chemistry. They have the talent to will themselves to buckets <laughs> between Dame, Giannis, and now you have Middleton starting to ramp up. So that's a scary thing because they can just beat you just on sheer talent alone. They don't need chemistry at this very moment. Um, number two that the Clippers I'm, are wishing. Uh, the Clippers are wishing for that. The Clippers are certainly wishing for that. Clippers are certainly wishing for that. Uh, another thing that certainly concerns me is their uh, their clutch numbers. I mean, this is one of the best teams right now in the NBA in the clutch uh, with one of the best net ratings in the clutch. It seems like that is when they play their best basketball. It's of no surprise because that is why they got Dame Lillard. But now you have Giannis doing this, you know, doing the same thing, turning up in the late game situations. They're number two in fourth quarter scoring in the NBA. Um, last night in the win against the Hawks, they went on an 18-7 run to beat the Hawks. They beat the Knicks in that that first matchup with Dame's late game heroics. You know, Brunson and Dame going clutch for clutch. And Dame, it was Dame time, right? You, you, it's, it's hard to... Uh, Quiet Dame time, but yeah, yeah, Dame time. It's hard to pass that up. Uh, Bucks being nine and one at home, so for the Knicks, it, it's going to be first of all, it's going to be all hands on deck. One of the things that uh, certainly helps is that they didn't have RJ in that last loss. They have him this time, but for me, it's going to be two things. You know, how do you close that talent gap that the Bucks have? How do you close that talent gap? Well, for one, it's going to be if Brunson's coming to the dance, who's coming with him? It's got to be Julius. Julius has to play better. He's got to play better. He shot five for 21 from the field in that loss. Went like one for six from downtown and one for nine from downtown. That's not going to get it done. He's going to have to get it. He's going to have to play. You know, we we just ran off his last three games. He's going to have to play like that. He's going to have to play like that. And for me, when you watch that first game, he had a lot of opportunities where he was taking Giannis off the dribble and having success. And using his physicality. And I think he should do that. Put the pressure on Giannis early in this game to say, hey, listen, we're not going to just sit back and and let you get comfortable here. You're going to have to defend. And, hey, maybe we get him in foul trouble. Maybe you pick up. He he gets his two personal fouls in the first half and has to miss some time. Julius had some, some success there. He needs to go back to that. Where he didn't have success is where he was settling for contested tough jumpers, Tough mid-range shots, tough threes. He he can't do that. When it when Portis and Giannis are on him, he's got to be in attack mode, just like how he's been in the, these last few games this week. He's got to do that. If Brunson is coming to the dance, 
Julius has to as well. And, and, and I think that's going to be one of the ways that they, uh, that they can win this game. It's got to be on the offensive end. I don't think defensively they, they, can, they can get the proper stop. And look, nothing's ever guaranteed in, in, in any matchup, right? Like how Brunson put up 45 against the Bucs, uh, it's, it's hard to guarantee that, although the Bucks perimeter defense is horrific. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm still – it's going to be a big game. Brunson's one of the better players when it comes to the in-season tournament. I expect him to take advantage of a weak perimeter defense and call his own number when needed. But you brought up Julius Randle, and I'm going to take. Uh, I'm going to add on to that, CP. We know the storyline was with Randle in the playoffs. Well, this is a big game. This is a big game. There's going to be some, you know, playoff like intensity because of what stakes are on the line. You know, we already heard between him. Brunson and RJ say how much they want to do this for the guys on the end of the bench and their coaches. Well, this is for, even though it's for a championship, even though it's not a seven game series, you only get one shot. So you got to show up in this one shot, man, against a, t- against a good offensive bucks team. So for Randall, I'm looking to see, can he come up when uh, for money time, as you always money say, CP, this is money time. All right. Do you, can you advance to the next round? Because we're going to see tomorrow when the, when the lights are, not necessarily the brightest like it is for the NBA championship, but it's going to be pretty bright. Yeah. Look, na- it's going to be nationally televised. Everyone's going to be tuning in. Right. Can, can you step up for a big game? Right. That's going to be my biggest question. And then the next thing I would say for this Bucks matchup is I'm looking at the benches, man. The Bucks don't have Jay Crowder right now. He's yeah. out. Uh, he had surgery. He's going to be out for eight weeks due to a groin injury. Um, I'm looking to see how the Knicks are going to be able to match up what Bobby Portis does because he's such a key thing he's been a for what he does, right? And our four is Josh Hart. They got a legitimate four. So I'm interested yeah. to see how we're going to defend that. And is our second unit going to be ready to play? Because they weren't ready to play when we played the Bucks the first time. Right. So are they going to be ready where you get quickly Josh Hart, Dante doing their thing? And that will be my big thing for when that it comes to the Bucks and look for that second unit. That that would be big. That that would be big because it's it's going to be on the offensive end. We've got to, we've got to stay in this game offensively. And then in crunch time, Try to get the key stops because, bro, like, you're not going to – You obviously, you can never take away everything. And with them, <laughs> when they're running, you know, Dame in isolation is a, is a handful. Giannis in isolation is a handful. Then in their two-man game, it's it's The pick starting, and roll, CP. They're starting, starting to do the pick and roll. Better. It's starting it to get better. And so then you got, you know, Middleton just chilling out there on the wing. You can't take away much, so you're going to have to keep up offensively, and that's why Julius is going to be critical in this game. they got to limit the turnovers, which they did in the first game. Another thing that that I think stands out is that in that first game loss, I mean, they got outscored from three by 30. They didn't shoot the ball well. And with, with Brooke Lopez patrolling the paint, he had eight blocks in that game. They're going to have to shoot the ball well because he's going to be waiting for Julius and RJ and Jalen to be driving, and he's going to be helping. And so it's going to be up to them to get those proper kickouts, make their reads, and the supporting cast is going to have to knock down the open shots when they get them because they're, they're going to try to keep them from getting those high-efficiency points in the paint. So Julius' decision-making, which has been great all week, it's going to have to be top-notch uh, uh, Tuesday against the, the Bucs. Uh, Knicks also destroyed them on the boards in that game. That's another thing. They're going to have to stay on the boards, stay on the glass, and try to get those second-chance opportunities because with this team like the Bucs, it's one of the best offenses in the league just by sheer talent. The Knicks are going to have to get extra, extra possessions if they're not going to be able to shoot the ball e- efficiently. So it's a winnable game, man. It's a winnable game, but their offense is going to have to, to, to fight that firepower, and then we'll, we'll just let the chips fall where they may and, and see, what, see what happens. Yeah, hopefully they're on the winning side, man, and they get to go on to the next round to face either the Celtics or the Pacers. Um, excuse me. This game, man, like, I want revenge. They, this, I want revenge. The Bucks, the Bucks, I get offensively, that's where they make their, their money. Yeah. Um, and, and you saw it. If you just watched even yesterday's game where they played the, the Hawks, and that yep. game was tight all the way up until the end, and it's like the Bucks decided, you know, let's just put these guys away. The offense is starting to get figured out. They're starting to use the Giannis and and, and uh, Jan, They're starting to use the Giannis and Dame pick and roll yep. a little bit more now. Yep. That's that's lethal. Yep. Um, 
Nick's just got to be able to keep up offensively, man. I know you don't think the defense is going to be what's able to stop them, but look, Dame only had 20. Uh, it was also like relatively, it was a quiet night yeah. for the Bucks when they played the Knicks the first time. And the Knicks played poorly. Yeah. Okay. Just pulling up the stats right now from that first game as uh as as ESPN decides to say somewhere else. Here we uh-huh. go. So first game, you had Dame's quiet 30. And I say quiet because it didn't even feel like it was yeah, just it was quiet. It was quiet. You know, it was quiet. You had Giannis have 22. And I thought Mitch did a good job defending uh, Giannis and Brooke in that game um, for the most part. So the Knicks were able to hold the, hold the Bucks to 110. They It was a 110-105 loss for the Knicks. And you got to think that Brunson, 45. The Knicks' <laughs> highest score was Grimes with 17. Uh, for everyone who's uh, just, you know, attacking Grimes right now. Yeah. Uh, there's also uh, Julius Randle, who had 16. That was the third highest uh, score. And then you had Quickly with 14. We didn't have anybody else after that. Yeah, yeah. But to, the next to, guy was atrocious, Josh Hart with six. Atrocious shooting night for them uh, that night. So, like I said, I think both teams have improved since that night. And the Knicks are going to have to bring their A game, obviously, to, to win this thing. Uh, another thing, like you mentioned with Dame, he started the year off ice cold from three. He's starting to heat up now. Now he's at about 38% from three in his last 10 games. The one thing, though, with the Bucks, beatable team, no question about it, but they're now seeing the way that they play in crunch time and how dominant they can be and how good they can be defensively. I think their defensive rating in crunch time is in like the the nineties, like ninety seven, which is great, and their offense's rating is like one thirty in crunch time, and so, but but what what they want to do is they don't want to lean on that, they want to come out the gates that way, and so that could be a scary thing for the Knicks, especially in the beginning of this game, because I think the Bucks are gonna try to make it a point to turn up to get the gas early rather than late. And so the Knicks are going to have to be ready for that. CP, this the Knicks lost by five to a Bucks team that shot 20 from 39 from downtown. That's 51.3% yeah. and shot 42.7%, 35 of 82 from the field. So if the Knicks can keep, and, and the Knicks shot 39.6% from the field, 25.6% from three, if the Knicks were able to keep it within five by doing that, I'm saying, man, that this game, this game can't be had by the New York Knicks. They just got to come out with their A game. They can't do what they did against the Hornets. They can't do what they did against Detroit. Nah. They have to do what they did in they Toronto. Need a Toronto level effort. To yes. Beat this team. Yes. And, you're going to need all of that. Yeah. And that means, you know, Julius and Mitch staying out of foul trouble. Julius and Jalen scoring efficiently, supporting Cass knocking down. It's going to it's going to take a full rotation effort to beat this team. You're gonna need Dante. To, uh, you're gonna need Dante, obviously Grimes. Yeah. You're gonna need and quickly all to shoot three ball well. Dante La Dante, isn't that what uh, our guy Cody Glock says? Dante Dante yes. La Dante. Dante La Dante. Yes, yeah. yes. There you go. I like Dante's Inferno personally. Yeah. Like when he's on fire. Personally. I do. I do like Dante's Inferno, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, great show, Al. Great show. I thought we we summed up the week and. Uh, Segwayed into the next week quite nicely here on, on Nick's Weekly episode 80. But like every show, Al, it comes down to this. Uh oh. Prediction time. It's only one game right now. It's only one game that we know. And as we said early in the beginning of the show, the week the week can round out in some different scenarios. We gave it to them, right? The Knicks lose against the Bucks. They could be in Boston on Friday. Or they're home against the Pacers on Friday, so you could have sell. You could have KP revenge if he's playing, or you could have Obi's revenge early. Oh my God! <laughs> but either way, we have revenge tours either way. Oh my goodness gracious! Yeah, prediction, one game prediction. Can't get out of this one, bro. Let's go. We winning, CP. Mm, We're winning. Go. We're winning on Tuesday. We're taking down the Bucks. We're going to the next round of the in-season tournament of the knockout round, okay? You heard it here first. 
Well, I'm with you, man. I'm going with a W. I'm going with a win in the Cream City. Pause. Uh, Jalen, Julius, <laughs> the gang coming from T Dot. They're ready. They're ready to go, man. They're, they're ready. They're hot. The big ragu's ready to cook. We ready, man. We not scared of these guys. One and zero. I'm going one and zero in the week. En route to Vegas. <laughs> 